Atlanta, baby, ain't nobody above it. When Atlanta smiles, I love it. So one of the first things we want to touch on is Microsoft. And not only Microsoft, but specifically Microsoft coming into Bankhead. So for those of y'all who don't know Atlanta, because the purpose of Black Atlas is to help you all tap into Atlanta culture, Bankhead is the streets, okay? Bankhead is the streets. You That's say that with so much power, <laughs> Bankhead. Because when you say they're from the streets, they're for the streets, we, we're really referring to Bankhead. So Microsoft heading into Bankhead is a big deal. It's a big deal for several reasons. So the company has purchased a 70-acre property that they're going to call the Quarry Yards, and it's going to be on the west side of Atlanta. It's going to be directly behind the Bankhead Marta Station. And so this is a huge thing because anyone that knows Atlanta, anyone born and raised in the city, knows that we just love gentrification. Like, if you call it how you see it, we love gentrification. And this is just another example of that. And it doesn't come without some give from Microsoft. So it's not like they're just coming in, taking over the city and not giving anything. The space that they're building is going to be a de developmental area. And it's going to have some office spaces, about 1,700 different residential areas. But the big concern that we have now is the fact that we don't know which areas are going to be reserved as affordable housing units. And this becomes an issue all the time across Atlanta, across America, if we look at it as a whole. This is just a microcosm of what's happening. And even the world. The whole the world. The whole world. I remember traveling to Paris, and it's almost the, res the reverse of what happens here. Um, you have low-income people are pushed to the outer skirts of the city, like really, really far off. Whereas right now, they're mostly concentrated in deep the into the city. But we see that it's actually going to start reflecting the way that it happens in European countries, mm -hmm. where people are pushed out of the cities and forced to live in the outskirts, which I think is what we're going to see happen here. Because um, as beneficial as it is to the economy, in some ways, I consider it economic warfare because you now raise the property taxes mm -hmm. and the people who once lived there can no longer afford to live in their own homes, mm -hmm. you know? And that leads us to the conundrum of whether or not this truly is a good thing or a bad thing. Because no one, if you look at the heart of gentrification, no one is against the neighborhood getting cleaned up. No one's like, oh man, you guys want to fix up that house? Get out of here. Nobody's against that. We're against the part that you just touched on, the fact that typically the property taxes rise and the people that are from that neighborhood that have put their blood, sweat, and tears, their memories, their history, their legacies, yeah. everything into that neighborhood eventually get pushed out. So that's why Microsoft moving into Bankhead, which is definitely like a black people area, is a big deal because we don't want our people, our ATLians are from the Peach State, born and raised, to have to be sent out. So I agree with you completely, Asia. I do not like to see people displaced from their homes, especially people that look like me who grew up in neighborhoods close to mine, you know what I mean, who have added to my life. However, I think that sometimes our community can be a little reactive, you know. We can say, oh, this is happening and re respond to what's happening rather than being proactive and preventing these things from happening. It's very easy to say, like, the saying goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. So why have we not been utilizing our streets, our resources, people from our communities who have wealth to come back and pour that into our communities to buy back the block? If we did that, we wouldn't be losing big head to Microsoft mm -hmm. and other companies. You know, That's a huge discussion. And I, I feel you on that on so many levels because I think there's often times where we get mad at white people or the majority or however you want to phrase it for coming in and taking over. But as you said, what have we done with what we have? Exactly. And there's a lot of the times, like there's a part of the street, well, it's really a field of the street from my house right now in the Gresham neighborhood, that it just sits there. And it could easily be flipped into a part of playground. It could be a community center, whatever the case. And it's going to sit there as a field until a group of white people come in. Mm -hmm. And then as the black neighbors that have been there for umpteen years, mm -hmm. we're going to go, how dare you white people come in and fix this neighborhood? So I get it entirely. Mm -hmm. I think we're really quick to point the finger without doing anything and taking a look at what have we done? Mm -hmm. Why was this property available for them to snatch up at such a low price? So I get it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's an unpopular opinion. I think it's one that we all are too afraid to look in the face and accept. Mm -hmm. But even with that, I will say that black economics is becoming more popular. I just saw on Instagram uh, nine families, I believe, joined together and bought like 77 acres of land mm -hmm. somewhere out that. in Georgia. You know what I mean? Um, and it, we even think about Nipsey Hussle, what he was able to do out in the West Coast. So we're getting there. 
Mm-hmm. It's not impossible, but we're not where we need to be yet, y'all. Definitely not. Okay. But we're going to keep things.